Okay. So hi everyone. Today we'll be taking a look at different keyboard layouts and how to optimize uh, the way that you type. So first, let's take a short intro into keyboard layouts. So what exactly is a keyboard layout? A keyboard layout is basically the arrangement of the keys on a keyboard. So most of the keyboard feature uh, layouts that we, we know are QWERTY, QWERTS, or AZERTY layouts, named after the first six letters of the top row. This can vary depending on location and language, but most default layouts are variations of these three. Some people find different layouts more comfortable or easier to use than others. And these layouts can be changed on computers as well as on mobile devices. So the strengths and weaknesses of QWERTY, AZERTY, and QWERTS will vary. In the strengths, they are default for most keyboards and easy to reach with shortcuts and symbols. Most people already know the basics of the layouts and are used to these. However, they have weaknesses too. They can be uncomfortable to use and they don't often use the home row. Common letters and pairs are in weird and awkward positions. Next, we can take a look at Dvorak. So this is a different keyboard layout than the other three. Um, and it has some special strengths. It's very comfortable and optimized for English. And it's like that because the way that it's arranged makes more important keys uh, on the home row, making them easier to press when you need them. In weaknesses, we can see that shortcuts and symbols are harder to reach, and it's not exactly optimized for non-English typers, making it not necessarily um, better in any case. Another popular keyboard layout is Colmac. Under the strengths, we can see that it is also more comfortable than the typical QWERTY. It's easy to reach with its symbols and shortcuts, and more important keys are on the home row, similar to the Dvorak. However, it's not a default uh, in the list of keyboards in many devices, so that is a small weakness. So with these three diagrams, we can compare and contrast the different um, keyboard layouts. So for QWERTY, um, as many of you guys might know, it was designed for um, the use of the typewriter. And it's made so that along each column, um, keys that like letters that are not used in consecutive order, like don't jam the machine. So it's not necessarily efficient for modern typing. On the right side, however, if you look at Dvorak, um, all the largest circles are on the middle home row, making it really easy and comfortable to use. This goes for the Colmac as well. Of course, there are also very unique layouts too. And some of these are the one-handed layouts. These layouts are designed for only one hand, which are useful for people who have um, difficulties in one hand, such as arthritis or some other injury. It uses the center of the keyboard um, so that all keys can be reached. It's a good alternative to buying a keyboard designed for um, one. Some keyboard layouts are specific to a particular language. These layouts are usually similar to QWERTY. However, they replace some small keys with accent keys or language specific characters. This can make typing in your native language easier because you can easily access the necessary characters. Let's take a look at how to change layouts. So a commonly asked question is, do I need a new keyboard? And the simple answer to that is no. Changing layouts doesn't require you to purchase an entirely new physical keyboard. The layouts can be changed within your computer settings uh, just on the device itself. When you change a layout, the keys on the keyboard will not correspond to the input of the keyboard. You can have multiple different layouts stored in a computer so if you want to try out many different ones, 
uh, you can go ahead and get rid of the ones that you don't like and switch back or remove them later. If you would instead prefer to buy a new keyboard with um, the physical keys corresponding to the input that you find on screen, the prices will typically range from $30 to $200. So on a Windows device, let's take a look at how to um, change your keyboard layout. So first you just open the settings, um, then you go to the time and language category, and on the language bar on the left, you just click language. Then going to your language options under your preferred language, which in this example is English, Canadian, you click the options, you add a keyboard, and then um, you can use it. If you ever want to get rid of it, all you have to do is click the remove button. Keyboard covers. So keyboard covers, also referred to as keyboard skins or protector, can be placed on top of your laptop's keyboard like a second skin. They are designed to keep dust, moisture, crumbs, and other dirt from settling on your device, keeping your laptop clean and functioning properly. You can also purchase keyboard covers of different keyboard layouts, which helps you change your keyboard layout in your settings. Um, just so that you can uh, reflect the new layout onto like a physical visual uh, platform. Keyboard covers can be purchased from Best Buy, Amazon, Walmart, and a lot of other stores. Typing on mobile. So should you switch keyboards on mobile? When typing on a phone or tablet, switching the keyboard layout won't significantly affect your typing experience. On-screen keyboards already make accents easily accessible by holding down the letter, as you can see here, and just selecting um, whichever symbol you need uh, on the list of accents. Since you typically only use two fingers to type on mobile, the position of the keys doesn't really change the way you type. So comfort is the most important thing, possibly. Um, just a couple tips for smartphone typing. A little bit unrelated, but could be useful. There are two main ways of typing on a smartphone touch screen. You can either use two thumbs or with one index finger. In landscape mode, like in this picture, typing with both thumbs is typically faster because you can more easily reach all of the keys. In portrait mode, some find it easier to use a single index finger instead since keys are smaller. Continuing on with the tips, you can use autocorrect and word prediction, which you can turn on in your settings if those help you. If your phone does not have an autocorrect feature or you would like a better one, you can download third-party apps like SwiftKey or other ones that help you with autocorrect as well. Um, a couple tips for tablet typing. The on-screen keyboard may be a bit too small for the same fast and accurate typing that you would have on a keyboard um, for your computer. So you can custom, uh, customize the keyboard settings here as well. And you can split the keyboard into two different parts if it's more comfortable for one hand typing. Um, all you have to do is touch and hold the keyboard icon and select split. To put it back to normal, you just have to touch and hold the keyboard icon again and select merge. Um, practicing typing. When learning a new layout or learning one that you already know, it is important to practice with the typing, practice typing with the layout regularly. Whether you're on your phone or a computer, you should try to type without looking at the keyboard. This will help you a lot um, with typing faster because you'll have muscle memory for each letter when you want to um, use it. We also have a past webinar on improving typing, which we can share with you guys later. Um, for just some free resources that you can use to improve your typing, these four are some well-known platforms. Um, MonkeyType, Keymash, QBR and Type Racer. Monkey Type is a pretty well made practice website and it tracks your stats. It's also usable in different languages. Keymash is just a simple racing platform with a ranking system where you can 
basically race other players and see how fast you guys type. A good site for learning is KeyBR, which creates fake words to uh, help you work on learning specific letters and patterns that are frequent in languages. And Type Racer, the most well-known of all, is a basic site that lets you race other players. Um, now it's time for a live demo. So I'm just gonna open the start menu here. If I open my settings, I have to go to the time and language category. And on the left-hand side bar, if I click language and scroll down, I can find my preferred languages. All I have to do here is click on English, then the option. And you can see that I have um, keyboard layouts that I can add. So at the, at the moment, I am using a QWERTY layout, which is just your typical one that you guys are probably all familiar with. But if I wanted to type in another language um, with their uh, more accessible and easy to use keyboard layout, I can find it here. So as you can see, there are different layouts here. Most of these are all QWERTY, but let's say that I wanted to type with um, a French keyboard. I can just click on Belgian French, which uses an Azerty keyboard, and this will be added to my current keyboards available. All I have to do now is go to the languages, select the keyboard from Belgian French, and as you can see, my keyboard layout has completely changed to the Azerty layout. Now, if I don't like this layout, or if it's not what I wanted, I just have to click Belgian French here, this layout, and remove it. And yeah, it's that simple. Uh, that's it. Thanks.